When the Dutch came back from the West Indies, they brought much porcelain with them. They tried to duplicate the porcelain with its transparency and being so fragile, but they were not able to as much as they tried. But they did produce a new form of pottery called delf. The gentleman explains how it is done. Pottery, which was very thick and crumbly and not transparent or translucent at all. And uh, they had never seen anything like, like this before. And so they, they were very disappointed when they tried to make it and couldn't. So they tried doing all kinds of earth clays and other kinds of materials. And uh, all they got was just thinner, stronger, lighter pottery. And uh, it, it was not porcelain. <laughs> and the Europeans, of course, didn't, didn't really like it that well either. But they did get, by liquefying their pot, their clay, this clay slip. And that you can't put on a potter's wheel, of course. But they did learn that by making molds, out of plaster, they could put this clay slip into a clay, into a plaster mold, and then they could simply pour it in, and they would be able to clean it up, take it out, and remove it and after they had left, left it in there for a little while they had a fairly plastic piece of clay pottery that would end up being made into the, 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 the uh, clay pieces that they wanted. This happens to be going to be made into a little clay tray with little fancy edges and uh, by the way it, it stays plastic for quite a while by wetting it I can mold it with my fingers and uh, it, it becomes uh, kind of fluid when I wet it down. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with all of the details of uh, working on it, but it gives you an idea as to how they could work with it. Uh, this was another piece that was made in a more three-dimensional mold, and they would, we would fill that mold with uh, the clay, and then leave it in about 20 minutes, and then tip it upside down and pour the liquid clay out. And by that time, there would be a thin layer of clay formed on the inside of the mold, and you have a hollow piece. I always tell the kids when they are here that this is how they make chocolate Easter bunnies. <laughs> but, of course, it's not chocolate, so they can't eat Back then, in the 1600s, the clay that can be fired, white, fired and become a white one or a gray or a dark, uh, unpleasant kind of color. And uh, then they would have to put a glaze on it called a tin glaze because they wanted a white background to imitate the porcelain. And uh, that happened to have a lead component to it. And you can't use lead anymore, of course, because that's a poison. And uh, so um, later on, we, they perfected a clay that would fire it this way. By the way, just to give you a comparison, that's the sound of greenware.
I always say that sounds like a Dutchman's head. <laughs> Any Dutchman here? <laughs> I hope. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> but I am one too. So, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Now, I don't know whose head that sounds like, but whoever else is here is probably your head. But this is much harder, much more brittle, and if it drops, it shatters. You know? So uh, that, that is the, the uh, final state of, of, of a bisque. We decorate them with a pigment that was invented by the Persians the, uh, about 2,000 years ago. And it was a metal oxide. And the metal, the kind of metal, determines the color of the oxide. Uh, originally, this blue was a cobalt oxide. That is not legal anymore because it's radioactive. <laughs> And so now they have a different metal that does the blue. And uh, if they want a red, and they use red a lot, uh, that's a ferrous oxide, or green, that would be another kind of oxide. But they're all powdered oxide, and uh, dry. And they are water-based. Water and the artist would simply drop and put his brush in water and then in the, in the powder and then work that powder into the brush and then start to paint. And it's like doing watercolor. And he would begin to simply paint on the, on the bisque and it's immediately absorbed into the bisque. And the lighter the amount of the pigment, the, the, the more pastel the, the color. And the thicker the pigment, the darker the color. And that's the only difference. And there's not no white mixed in with it at all. It's just the, the amount of, of pigment that gets used. And, and then if you want to actually, when he does the design, he begins with the dark line, and that is called flecking, or tracking, and it's all done freehand, uh, and uh, one... Basically, Delph is blue. However, later they added other colors, and now it has expanded in its style.